and we got cut off in the last video, but um, 600 is the, if we take the derivative with respect to q1, treating it just like we would x, we have 600 minus the derivative of this guy is 0.6q1. All the q2 terms and the constants are 0, minus 1.2, and then minus 0.2q2. Our partial with respect to q2 is going to be the derivative of this guy, which is, I'm sorry, the, the derivatives of the q1 terms are 0. Then we'll have 500 as the derivative of 500q2 minus 0.4q2 minus 0, minus 0, minus 1.5. And uh, back here, we should have said, this is, uh, we missed a term here. This is minus 1.2 is the derivative of 1.2q1, and then minus 0.2q2. So here, for with respect to q2, the derivative of that is negative 1.5, and the derivative of that term is negative 0.2q1. And we want to set that equal to lambda times the gradient of g. Now, if we take the derivative of 0, we're going to get 0. And if we take the derivative of 0 with respect to a different variable, we're still going to get 0. So our equations basically are line 1 equals 0, line 2 equals 0, and then our final constraint is 0 equals 0. That's our g of x, y equals c. But remember that we just said that there is no constraint, so 0 equals 0 is always 100% valid. So when we solve that, we actually find, here we go, here's our two equations. The first one equal to, you could, you could put an L times zero here, but it's not going to make any difference. The second equation equals L times zero. And then I'm avoiding putting zero equals zero because that's a true statement no matter what. So you don't need that in there for unconstrained optimization. And when we scroll down far enough, we see that the solution is Q1, you should sell 699 or produce 699.1 units of product one and 896.7 units of product two. If you want to determine how much you should sell them for, recall that back here, P1 is, once we know Q1, that'll tell us what price to sell product one for. And once we know Q2, that tells us what price to sell product two for. So plugging in 699.1 into the P1 equation, we get $390.27 per unit. And if we plug in 896.7 for quantity two, we get that we should sell product two for $320.66 per unit. And when we take these two quantities and plug them into our, our profit equation, which is this guy down here, if we substitute in Q1 and Q2 into this big old mess, we are going to get our maximum profit, which comes out to $433,000 or thereabout. So we've now demonstrated how to solve constrained optimization problems and unconstrained optimization problems. The only difference being that for unconstrained optimization, we just we, we let g of x, y be the zero function, and because the statement zero equals zero is always true, we can basically take advantage of this constrained optimization process by basically setting the gradient vector equal to zero, and that produces us with a optimal point, not barring or not being limited to any specific point. For example, here, g of x, y was the function 40,000 x plus 10,000 y equals 600,000. But when we say 0 equals 0, we're no longer limited to this blue line. In fact, now we're opening ourselves up to the possibility of a maximum being any point on that surface, even beyond this region of x goes up to about 50. We are not limiting ourselves to any region of this curve. So that's it for now. Um, that's how we do perform optimization in calculus three, in a multivariable calculus, and we will go ahead and stop there.